Morning guys, how you doing? Hope you're well. Welcome to the morning show. So as soon as you come on, please do make sure that you like. Please do make sure that you comment that you're here. Let me tell me, tell me where you're from. Let me know that you're here. Let me know that you're watching and do click a share. If you're listening on the podcast, please do leave a review at the end. Um, it would massively, I'd massively appreciate that. Um, thank you. Right, let's look into it. So um, why are we doing the opposite of things that make us happy? Now, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, you know, <clears throat> I've, I have nearly three, I have around 350 clients that I look after. And when I speak to those clients and I look at what they are doing and the actions that they are taking um, throughout their life compared to what we should be doing, it's monumentally evident that a lot of people are doing stuff that's going to make them unhappy more than it's going to make them happy. Okay, morning guys, morning Gray, morning Andrew. Um, and uh, I kind of try and get into my head why people end up, morning Volley, why people are doing things and taking actions and thinking about things that take them the opposite route of the way that they want to go, which baffles me, it baffles me. Um, I mean, what? Let's, let's look at some of the things that make you happy. So when we look at being happy, um, we talk about having a great family environment, right? So we have a, a, a great work-life balance. I know it's very difficult to get a work-life balance, I get it, but at least having some sort of family routine there where we have time with our children, we have time with our wives, we have dedicated time where we're present, where we switch the phone off and we have date night, or we have, um, you putting the kids to bed or you having football time with the kids. So if you visualize that happy place, that, that's one of them. Another one is looking in the mirror and being comfortable in your own skin. You know, I don't think a lot of men are happy with the way that they look. Um, you know, as you grow up through your twenties, you're very um, passionate about the way that you look. And it's not that you don't become passionate about it in your 30s and 40s. It's just that there's more distractions that are there to take you away from being happy and passionate about yourself because you're putting more work into your children and your family and your work. So your appearance is something that's very important to you. And you want to look in the mirror and feel happy with the way that you look, right? Um, other things could be, uh, happy places could be financially stable, other happy places could be staying away from the drink. Other happy places could be um, making sure that you get your holiday, making sure you know um, you, you get that time, that quality time going away from work, getting that rest period, whatever it might be, your happy time, the variant as always, as always, would be dependent on the individual. Morning, Greg. How's it going? Um, and you know that process, you you know what you have to do. Morning, Anthony. You know what you have to do to be successful in that in that department of being happy. And you know what you need to do to make sure life balance is weighed off. You know what you need to do to make sure that you're looking good in front of the mirror. You know what you need to do to make sure that your mental well-being and your state of mind is in a good place. You know what you need to do to be financially secure. You know the process. You know the process in your head. Deep down, you know it but we're still not doing it. We're still not eating well. We're still not training regularly. We're still not structuring our time. We're still not planning our time. We're still not in good habits. We're still letting work destroy us. We're still letting work take away valuable time from your family, your children. You're still not finding that headspace to, morning Dean, you're still not finding that headspace to find your own space in your own time away from the rat race away from um uh, the destruction and um uh from the distraction of life yeah sorry i was looking for another word um and when i was going we were up in london yesterday we went to london zoo i was doing a lot of people watching a lot of observing <laughs> i'm a nightmare but going around the station london bridge undergrounds train stations and i was watching a lot of the guys of the criteria that i work with so many look unhappy. Eight out of ten of those guys that I saw were overweight massively. Okay, I, I, I didn't see many guys who 
who are over 30, who are in shape, who looked happy. You know, look, I start being on that train, and I'm not saying, you, I know that you still have to be on that train to go to work, I know that you still have to go to work. <coughs> that, that commute <coughs> might be just part of the routine, however, away from the commute, you can still be happy. Okay, you can still be in great shape. You can still look after yourself. You can still <clears throat> still make time for yourself. Okay, and I just saw a lot of unhappiness, a lot of people that were overweight, a lot of people that maybe are stuck in that rut and fit who look very vulnerable, who look very distracted, pulled away from maybe what is their happy place. Okay, um, so what? So why do you? Why do you do the things? that are opposite to happy. So when we look at the things, we, we kind of look into detail and I think the biggest thing is habits. So a lot of people are implementing very poor habits and these are habits that have built up over a long period of time. And when you conduct habits, when you implement habits, what happens is that your state of mind has just been doing lots of reps of these bad habits. So your mind doesn't know any different from from like the poor habits that you're doing. So for example, coming home, having two or three beers, bottles of beers to cope with the day. And you end up maybe doing that Monday through to Friday, then Saturday you might probably have a little bit more to drink. And what we end up doing is getting into that habit of coming back and numbing maybe the frustration of where you are in life, numbing the frustrations of the how you look, numbing the frustrations of where it went wrong. Um, or, you know, of, of, of or numbing the pain of consistently being frustrated with making excuses about why you can't move forwards and be happy. So those habits become overwhelmingly ingrained in your brain. And my job is to rewire the brain and the state of mind so that actually you can think a little bit differently so that you can start implementing some better habits, start doing reps on those bad, on those good habits so that that becomes fundamented so fundamentally um fundamentally your your primary habit which is going to be a more much more positive habit in your life so that when you come home you get into the habit of not drinking when you come home so you maybe save it for a date night on saturday night with the missus and that way you cut down on booze you cut down save some money that way you feel a little fresher you think a little clearer okay and you probably shift some body fat okay and this is what i talk about small wins okay we can't achieve overnight success in business we can't achieve overnight success on ourselves what we have to understand is that we have to have patience and employ patience to be able to change the way that we think Okay, you're not suddenly going to cut those beers. You're not suddenly going to cut the shit food that you're eating. You're not going to suddenly shit cut the shit structure that you have or no structure. What we have to do is find small wins. Okay, lots of little wins that we implement. And we start building those small wins up. And eventually, after two, three, four months, we have a big win. So, for example, let's say a small win. A small win for the first week may be introducing 15 minutes of exercise every single morning. The second win, a small win might be losing the drinking from Monday to Friday. The next week might be losing the fast food that you, that you eat at lunchtime and you prepare your own food. A small win the following week might be that you go to bed at 10 instead of one o'clock in the morning while you're sitting there watching Babe Station or Pornhub. Okay. So you can see all of these small wins and you just keep practicing them and you're just repping, you're repping. It's like when you're in the gym, you're bicep and curling, you're shoulder pressing, okay? And that type of stuff is gonna strengthen you. It's gonna make you stronger. It's gonna build up your conditioning. And what you're doing with your mind here is you're building up new habits. You're building up new routines and you're just building up the strength and conditioning in your state of mind so that you're, you are rewiring the way that you think. Um, I hope this makes sense to you guys. If it does, just make sure you just let me know. Um, another way that we can uh, sort of, um, another thing I think we do things that make us unhappy is um, a lack of fulfillment. So in life, we're unfulfilled. We have no purpose. 
So we just kind of don't see why overall we really have to sort ourselves out. Like in the back of our minds, we want to sort ourselves out. But at the front of our minds, there is no fulfillment going on in your life right now. There's no purpose, there's no drive, there's no passion. And life without drive, passion, purpose, fulfillment is stale. And it's like walking around with the shackles on, walking around like a zombie. And that then tends to give you the, the, the emotions that create the bad habits. So maybe a core side of your development will be to um, look at purpose. What are you going to wake up? What's your purpose? You're going to wake up? What's your fulfillment? Morning, Gary. You're going to wake up and what's your passion for life and what's your drive? Because when you start getting those things, you don't want to do the bad habits. You don't want to fall down the rabbit hole. You don't want to do the things that make you unhappy. It's kind of like a push-pull scenario. Okay. One of the things that I do, okay, massively, is reflection. So when you when you get to your personal time and your personal spaces, reflect how your life is going. So it's like going on a journey, putting your map out in front of you to look which way you're going and kind of looking at your life. Just like you would do if you're, you were in the jungle or you were uh, out on the countryside on the moors, you'd be looking at this map and it would t be telling you how to go from a place A to place B. Your life map and part of your self-reflection would be to open that map and look at it and go, okay, how am I living my life? Am I doing the things that I want to? Why aren't I doing the things that I want to? What are the things that what are the things that I want to be doing but I'm not doing? This will be up on podcast later, Ian, if you can hear me. And that self-reflection, when you do it quite con consistently, daily, you're allowing to yourself to know where you are in your life, which is why at the start of my book, I get you to self-audit yourself, okay? If you haven't read that, go and buy yourself, it's a state of mind. Available at all good Amazons, <laughs> the only Amazon. Um, but basically, at the start of that book, you will self-audit yourself, self-reflection, looking at the map. Where are you in life? Where are you going to be from here? In, 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 oh, let's have a look at the map. Where am I going to be next week? Where am I going to be in 12 weeks? Where am I going to be in six months? Where am I going to be in one year? Where's the direction that I'm heading? There's my happiness. Looking at the map. Well, I'm, I'm not doing the things that are going to make me happy here. So I better fucking jump on board and stop pissing around and make sure that I'm on the right track to make sure that I'm heading on the right journey. All right. So you see, to summarize, we are doing the things that are opposite to the to, to making us happy because we are falling into bad habits. We have lacking purpose, passion, obsession about ourselves, drive and fulfillment. And because we're lacking those things, we slip back into the bad habits. And the bad habits are our barrier, our six foot, 10 foot, 12 foot, 20 foot wall that's stopping you being happy, okay? It's the reason that you don't train regularly. It's the reason that you're not eating properly. It's the reason that your mental well-being is fucked. Um, it's the reason that you're probably feeling very overwhelmed with life right now. Sorry, I thought my little one was awake. Um, so, what are you going to do about it? And would be my question to you, if you were one of my clients in my mastermind, I would say to you, what's the next move? So I'm going to finish this podcast by asking you, if you've listened all the way through, good effort. What's the next move? And that is really down to you. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. Please do share this podcast. Please do like it. If you haven't, please do comment. Let me know your feedback. Uh, it's important to understand uh, if this relates to you. If you're on the podcast, please do leave a review. I'd massively appreciate it. Have a great day, guys.